Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent to address the Senate for up to 15 minutes. Without objection. Uh, Mr. President, on November 19th, 1863, standing on the blood-stained battlefield of Gettysburg, Abraham Lincoln delivered one of the most significant and best-remembered speeches in American history. At the conclusion of the Gettysburg Address, Lincoln stated, and I quote, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. That government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Mr. President, in the year 2015, with a political campaign finance system that is corrupt and that is increasingly controlled by billionaires and special interests, I fear very much that, in fact, government of the people, by the people, for the people, is perishing in the United States of America. Mr. President, five years ago, in the disastrous Citizens United Supreme Court decision, by a five to four vote, the U.S. Supreme Court said to the wealthiest people in this country, they said, okay, billionaires, you already own much of the economy. Now we are going to give you the opportunity to purchase the United States government, the White House, the U.S. Senate, the U.S. House, governor's seats, legislatures, and state judicial branches as well. In essence, that is exactly what they said, and in fact, that is exactly what is happening as we speak. As a result of Citizens United, billions of dollars from the wealthiest people in this country will, during this campaign cycle, flood the political process. Super PACs, a direct outgrowth of the Citizens United decision, enable the wealthiest people and the largest corporations to contribute unlimited amounts of money into campaigns. According to recent FEC filings, Super PACs have raised more than $300 million for the 2016 presidential election already. And this election cycle has barely begun. This $300 million is more than 11 times what has been raised at this point in the 2000 election cycle. And what, Mr. President, will the situation be four years from now and eight years from now? How many billions and billions of dollars coming from the wealthy and powerful will be used to elect candidates who represent the rich and the super rich. Mr. President, according to the Sunlight Foundation, more than two out of every three dollars raised for presidential candidates so far are going to super PACs, not to the candidates' own campaigns. This is really quite extraordinary. What this means is that super PACs which theoretically operate independently of the actual candidate, have more influence and more money over the candidate's campaign than the candidate himself or herself. Let me repeat that. The millionaires and billionaires who control the super PACs have more money and more influence over a candidate's campaign than the candidate himself or herself. In other words, the candidate becomes a, a surrogate, a representative for powerful special interests, not even in control of his or her own campaign. Mr. President, 35 individuals or companies have already donated more than $1 million to super PACs so far. According to the Associated Press, Almost 60 donors 
have accounted for nearly one-third of all of the money donated so far in the presidential race, including donations to the campaigns themselves. Donors giving at least $100,000 account for close to half of all funds raised. Donors giving at least $100,000 account for close to half of all funds raised. And let's be clear, Mr. President, this is all taking place at the early stages of the campaign. We have a long, long way to go. We know, for example, that the Koch brothers, worth some $85 billion, the second wealthiest family in America, have made public that they intend to spend some $900 million on this election. This is more money than either the Democratic Party or the Republican Party will spend. One family spending more money than either the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. Now, what, how do we describe a process in which one multi-billion dollar family spends more money on a campaign than either of the two major political parties? Well, I define that process not as democracy, but as oligarchy. Let's be honest and acknowledge what we are talking about. We are talking about a rapid movement in this country toward a political system in which a handful of very, very wealthy people and special interests will determine who gets elected or who does not get elected. That is not, to say the least, what this country is supposed to be about. That is not, to say the least, the vision of Abraham Lincoln when he talked about a nation in which we had a government of the people, by the people, for the people. That is not what Lincoln's vision was about. Mr. President, this is not just Bernie Sanders expressing a concern. Last week, this is what former President Jimmy Carter had to say about the current campaign finance system on the Tom Hartman radio show. President Carter stated that unlimited money in politics, and I quote, violates the essence of what made America a great country in its political system. Now, it's just an oligarchy with unlimited political bribery being the essence of getting the nominations for president or to elect the president. And the same thing applies to governors and U.S. senators and Congress members. So now we have just seen a complete subversion of our political system as a payoff to major contributors who want and expect and sometimes get favors for themselves after the election's over, end of quote. Mr. President, I would ask unanimous consent to put into the record President's Carter, President Carter's full statement. Without objection. Mr. President, the need for real campaign finance reform is not a progressive issue. It is not a conservative issue. It is an American issue. It is an issue that should concern all Americans, regardless of their political point of view, who wish to preserve the essence of the longest standing democracy in the world, a government which represents all of the people and not a handful of powerful and wealthy special interests. Mr. President, the need for real campaign finance reform must happen, and it must happen as soon as possible. And that is why, clearly, we must overturn through a constitutional amendment this disastrous Citizens United Supreme Court decision, as well as the Buckley v. Vallejo decision. That is why we need to pass disclosure legislation, which will identify all those wealthy individuals who make large campaign contributions. But more importantly, 
It is why we need to move toward public funding of elections. Our vision for American democracy, our vision for the United States of America, should be a nation in which all people, regardless of their income, can participate in the political process, can run for office without begging for contributions from the wealthy and the powerful. Every member of the Senate, every member of the House knows how much time candidates spend on the telephone dialing for dollars. Republicans, Democrats, everybody. This is not what democracy should be about. Our vision for the future of this country should be one in which candidates are not telling billionaires at special forums what they can do for them. Our vision for democracy should be one in which candidates are speaking to the vast majority of our people, working people, the middle class, low-income people, the elderly, the children, the sick, and the poor, and discuss with them their ideas as to how we can improve lives for all people in this country. Mr. President, let us be frank, let us be honest. The current political campaign finance system is corrupt and amounts to legalized bribery. How can we in the United States tell developing countries how they can go forward in developing their democracies when our system is corrupt? Our vision for the future of this country should be a vision which is inclusive, which tells young people, if you're conservative, you're a progressive, you're interested in public service, you can run for office without begging the rich and the powerful for campaign contributions. Mr. President, when Congress returns after the August break, I will be introducing strong legislation which calls for public funding of elections. Public funding of elections which will enable any candidate, regardless of his or her political views, to run for office without being beholden to the rich and the powerful. I hope very much that the Republican leadership in the Senate will allow this legislation to get to the floor. I hope that we can have a serious debate about it. And I hope very much that we can go forward to restoring American democracy to a situation in which every citizen of this country has the right to vote and has equal power in determining the future of our great nation. Mr. President, with that, I yield the floor.